But then again, within the five year period or 10 year, yeah. I mentioned uh, later on, right? If, if you're not being complained against, then you're off. But during this, this uh, valid period, if you're under, under that condition of time, then you have to read the law, right? whether it's a party or not. Talking a lot about clients. Yes, the business, you don't need too many clients. <laughs> <laughs> the best the Thank you, Professor, for coming here with us and sharing your experience. I am really, and we all are very honored of your presence here. Thank you very much, Dr. Sankhya, for giving me the floor. Today, I have two questions. First one is, uh, is, is, a, is a continuation to uh, Professor Vichai, and that is, if you assess and monitor the, the behavior, the ethical behavior of Politicians, yeah. uh, uh, I mean, uh, official, official politicians, those who are uh, holding the offices, you monitor these persons. What do you do? What do you do? <laughs> the, you first think question, you just help me. <laughs> what do you do? First question is, what do you do? do would you go for for their any unethical behavior or any oh, unethical okay. actions? So that, that would you go for any any swing against him? This is the first question to you. I cannot or, it, right? or, or you just warn him, look, you are doing wrong, you are, it's not ethical, you should not do. Maybe you are suggesting him as, as a... This is my first question to you. Second question is, throughout your 27 points, I didn't see how would you protect corrupt officials in anti-corruption office. Do, do you have any... Any, any regulation, the person those who are investigating, the person those who are uh, involved in, in, in finding out these, these, these uncorrupt, unethical things, mm -hmm. he may, because it's, it's an only power institution. You are giving a lot of power, you are trusting a lot of things on these officials. Maybe they can slip their, their right path. How would you protect okay. the people? Thank, Thank you, sir. Very good question indeed. Now on the second one, we realize that the 700 staff members that we work with, we have a big role in, in, their, in, their, in their job to, to do their own correctly. The way we set up the, uh, the, the work is such that it would be very difficult to any single person to have any way in which to can change the, the direction of, of the case. Give you one exact example. Suppose I want to set up, or we want to set up an investigating subcommittee consisting of, let's say, four members or five members. These five members work as a subcommittee under the, the directive of the, the commissioners, and I commissioner. So these five subcommittees investigate the case, okay, collect information, talk to people, and so forth, on, and then make a decision, okay, five members unanimously find this person guilty, for instance. That report of uh, guilty verdict of subcommittee is not final. Okay. It had to be sent to the nine commissioner. I will be sitting reading this report. The case that is being submitted to us for deliberation, we can, in fact, throw it away. I mean, all you have done here is completely wrong. I completely disagree with you here, all right? And it's done many times. And sometimes the subcommittee say, okay, we we found this person guilty. The, the, the full board said, no way, he's not guilty. And this is it, not guilty, thing like that. So the way the procedure of investigation is so many layers of control, such that there is no way any individual person inside even myself suppose i want to to pen to pen a certain law which i thought i want to <laughs> i need to go to my colleague 
yeah, at any level to, to do that. And if you have done that openly in a bad way, you yourself will be subject to, to punishment. And that comes to the first question that you, you, you mentioned. Uh, what, uh, I mean, uh, what, what, what punishment? That, it means that for those who work in the area like, this, like myself, my colleague, if we have found to be that doing something wrong, the penalty that apply to us will be separate from ordinary people. <laughs> it means that the same mistake or the same error that other people who face penalty, for you, it will be twice. If, if you have done something wrong and the right person, suppose you go to jail for one year, for me, this is two. So everything will be double for us. So the, the penalty will be twice the ordinary penalty for ordinary people to, to, to kind of to, uh, to caution you that you have to be careful about body plan. About the behavior of the musician, of course, if they have done something wrong, normally the power, we have power to investigate already in our law. We can, we can submit for the removal of, of, of this office but we can't have the removal. We have to submit our case to uh, to, uh, to the, the special court, and the court will remove them. Okay. But now uh, you say we we be able to monitor and say what do you do. We don't know yet. If you have any suggestion, tell me. I I, I will put it in our regulation. <laughs> Please. Thank you. Um, my name is Lao. Yeah, uh, I am a project consultant at the Thai Institute of Directors, mm. which for those who don't know about it, is, a, is an institution, a non-profit non private organization that trains directors of companies to promote ethical behavior and, and professional uh, integrity, integrity mm -hmm. in board members of companies. but not just listed, all, all sides and all types of organization and many former ILD students are here, uh, very honorable uh, former students. So, uh, but if you allow me, um, working project from the, the private sector, which ILD coordinates on how we can have what we call collective action to help reinforce the fight against corruption. That you, you are in, in charge, but we are just trying to to do our, our role in supporting you. Um, the, um, the idea is two main questions. Uh, ju just a short one. I think being an economist, you are the one to find the definition of what will uh, Cap Cap Dule means, because it reminds me of the power of the central bank in Cap Cap Dule, the banks, right? So maybe you can look at what the central bank does with the banks and you do the same with politicians. But, uh, the, uh, Two main worries. Um, uh, one is a very technical question. Uh, between April 18 to the 120 day delays you yeah. have yeah. to issue all the, the regulations. regulations. If somebody does something wrong, somewhere in between, mm -hmm. will they be subject to the old law, old law or to the new one? Old law. So you, you have to do your best to complete all the regulations exactly. as soon as possible. Exactly. Okay, that was the technical one. The second one, uh, one step further is that, I mean, there are really some key changes I agree with you in this law, but having been here for something like almost 30 years, mm -hmm. uh, I've been a lot of, I've seen a lot of new exciting high laws in <laughs> constitutions <laughs> coming into place, and, and uh, it, it is in the details of enforcement, implementation often is the problem, and we've even seen Right. Good intentions studying into bad, like for example in corruption, I'm sure you know better than me that decentralization of power at the political level has played against because now it gives more room for people to get corrupt at more levels, which in turn forces you to create provincial <laughs> institutions, so it's kind of a vicious circles of the, the policeman running after your teeth. Um, the, the, the key question in that context is what what you see are the maybe couple of really key elements that will make this really give teeth to this. I mean, the, on the paper, the teeth are there, but what it takes to, 
to make a change as uh, Dr. Sankir mentioned about yeah. Singapore. Yeah. Between the old law and the new law, is it just on paper? Or what, it, what it takes to put it in, in fact, really, in real life? And how would, sorry, that's a bit of question. How would it change a case? I'm thinking, I don't think you would comment on specific cases, but there's a case of a very famous Thai official who, who people who paid money to that official were already prosecuted and jailed in the US, but the person who got the money is still running free, uh, uh, using avoiding tactics. Uh, uh, Do you think with the powers you have got here, you could change the way these cases or similar cases yeah, might be yeah, yeah, yeah. treated? Yeah, yeah. So actually, the case you mentioned last about the official here in Thailand is a US person, and the US citizen are already in jail. We're still having uh, our alleged culprit running around, nowhere to be seen. No, no, we, that's just the part. We, we interpret law in this country differently from the US. The law is different, the way enforcement is different, you know. Uh, and you can see that the way we do our work, we base on, in the legal term, the so-called inquisitorial approach. Meaning we don't accuse people. We, we just investigate whether we have evidence to find something wrong with that person. The US, they use the accusatorial approach. They accuse you first, and then you have to prove your innocence. That is a major difference. We are using the European technique, by the way. The so-called robot ISOAN and robot you know, The inquisitorial that we are using, inquisitive, we are looking at even or accusatorial, which is the original one. Uh, and this is for that. Inquisitorial is much more laborious and slow and so on, and, 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 and we have to be so so sure that we have all the evidence at hand in order to indict people. In the US, if you think you're wrong, they indict us, and you have to prove you're innocent. <laughs> That's why they can put people in jail quickly in the US. I should know because I was there, I was at the US court myself in Los Angeles. In this case, I was there, I went there. <laughs> so I know how the jury determined and how the judge and the deposit work with that. No. But now I have to go back and deal with my case. <laughs> but just for information, the case is almost at the end now for our side. Uh, whether it's wrong or not will be passed, we will be just on that within the next month or so. <laughs> but of course, I don't know whether in this case, we can use this new new law of the limitation of the statute limitation. Probably not, because uh, you know the, the time was, was uh, the law cannot be backtracked, it cannot be retracted. But even that is still many more years to go before the statute will be done. The other part is, is your comment, so I don't need to, to <laughs> okay, just accept your, your observation. The what? What, what it takes to really give teeth to this law and implementation? Well, well, you, you know, uh, to me, and, and at least, uh, I want to have to have a s smaller number of cases, so that we we only we only kind of attack the very meaningful cases that involve a lot of damages to the country, and if we can do that quickly and effectively, all the announcement of a, any big case will make a ripple. And that ripple, I think, is more effective than, than the number of many cases that we have done. That, that's what I'm asking. The more effective is to, to only hit a big one in a big ways and in, in, in quickly, so that we can have a, 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 a very regular cases, big cases, big fish being caught and so on. That will be effective of anti-corruption, I think. People will get afraid of being under, uh, being cartel of NACC, <laughs> and they just don't do bad things. And that will be what, what I would like. <laughs> okay. We have, uh, all right. Uh, you identify yourself? Yeah. Uh, good evening, uh, I'm, uh, my name is again, I'm a student here from the, uh, from Dung. I just, oh, yes. Good. yes. <laughs> I just want to uh, thank you, Excellency, for enlightening us on the new dimensions in the anti-corruption law here. Yeah. And while 
uh, everywhere in the world, the anti-corruption officers are being blamed uh, for catching only the uh, small fishes. <laughs> 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 and it's the same case where we had the anti-corruption office set up in Bhutan in the year 2006, and the office is being blamed uh, like that. And uh, I would like to know if you can mention some of the uh, big fishes uh, caught here in the net, in the anti-corruption <laughs> order, uh, in the anti-corruption yeah, yeah. and how effective that has been. Uh, been able to create a big difference to the rest of the society. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, yeah. Definitely, what one immediately called to mind is the case of a big water treatment plant in uh, in uh, in uh, in Kongda, which is in Sumatra uh, uh, province. You, you know, by Kawa Thailand, if you go to Hatia, the old route, you can pass a huge huge water treatment plant, which is not operational. It, it, it costs about 20 billion baht to build that part of, of the, the, the plant itself. But the land, and that's another story, the land that has been uh, used to, to build the plant there, or well, actually, was the, the source of crime that we investigated in, in the ACC. We found that the position of that province was guilty of using his power to buy up the land in that area, using his power to, to buy up the land. And then, and sold that land to the government, you know, profit about 10 times profit, okay? This is in, in, in that sale was like that. So we indict that politician that has committed crime that uses power to, to collect the land and, and sell it in, 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 in their uh, very expensive price to, to the government. And we submit the case to the Supreme Court for that uh, for decision. And the Supreme Court agreed with us and uh, uh, gave a verdict um, uh, of, oh, I think it's two year penalty, two year jail term to that politician. But of course, that person escaped. And uh, I don't know where he is now, but that is the case whereby uh, it's a big, big risk that we have caught. Uh, we now prosecuting, and I speak now about the case, but this case is being submitted in court about the, uh, the position again, uh, trying to, to, en to uh, engage in a, in a contract purchasing uh, five trucks from Austria. You know, uh, we, we uh, in, the, in the former government, they agreed to, to engage in that government to government using uh, the, the money, the, 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 the budget of the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration to buy five trucks from Australian, Austrian, not Australian, Austrian company. It, it ended up being the case that the five trucks that are supposed to be coming from Austria actually was coming from Bangkok. <laughs> and what they did is, of course, the contract is to buy the European, European five truck from Austria, but the, the company actually bought the car made in Lyon and shipped the, the car from Lyon to, to Europe and fit it with uh, fit the, the, the holes and the, the fire track and sent it back to Bangkok. And we found that something wrong here. And somebody who are involved must be, must be, uh, must be guilty for that. So we have a list of people who are now uh, being indicted by us, okay? There are many people, I don't want to go into detail, but the case is now being uh, 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 sued in the court, in the special court. This is an example of the case whereby we had a conflict with the Attorney General Office. The Attorney General Office looked at the case and looked at, okay, we had about, let's say, six or seven guilty persons that we elected. The Attorney General Office said, in our, in their opinion, only, there are only four persons 
that they want to sue. The other, they don't want to. And they say, can, can they sue only for not, not, not <laughs> No, how can, how can you do that? I mean, if, if, if you do that, there will be double standard. I mean, attorney general standard and agency standard. That cannot be done. I mean, it, it's impossible. If, if you don't sue, you don't sue anyone. Not, not for and through or not. So they send the case back to us. This is one of the first cases that we have to sue with our own money. And now we have done that in the court already, okay? Now the case is in court, whether the court will, will accept or not. Now, in that was in the court. We have done the, the, the suing, but the, the court has not accepted yet. They are now deliberating whether to accept the case or not, okay? That, the two cases they can think of right away. Should be, should be, you know, good enough for you to, uh, to remember. <laughs> I think we have a, a lot of good questions. I just like to comment uh, just a little bit on the type of question that can be asked. Okay. You uh, said, I think Mr. Florence uh, asked, uh, you know, what, what, what it takes to make the, the, the law to be effective. I call it to live with you. I have a rich experience in Singapore. First, uh, the law is. Uh, no, it's a, sorry. I actually totally agree with you. Uh, what it take to make the law effective? Uh, of course, uh, the law itself, you know, is very good. It gives a wider uh, investigation power and wider net, you know, it has to be both. Very, very good. And, and another thing that uh, he, he, he mentioned is uh, also that uh, uh, you need uh, political leaders who are strong in commitment to fight corrupt practices. You know, and he himself had been in the, at the forefront. This you can read about this uh, in his book for, from third world to first to be how to make the government clean, Singapore clean. So just just to add that, and uh, then uh, I, uh, I give uh, the floor to uh, who goes next. Okay, you want to ask which? Identify yourself, please. Uh, my name is Ishan. I'm from Maldives. Uh, I work for a public company. Uh, Student. I'm a student here at okay. IBS. Uh, as I understand, that uh, corruption is something unavoidable anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but some people go to the extent to say that corruption may be good, it fuels certain things in the economy. <laughs> uh, I just wonder, uh, with the new law, uh, it gives uh, rise to prevent uh, Crime, uh, bribery and corruption in the country. But I just wonder how to actually you know, measure uh, the success, the level of corruption, uh, whether we are at a good stage or are we improving? How would we measure actually uh, the level of corruption? And my second question is um, that you have mentioned that the we are following the, uh, Thailand is following the European inquisitive uh, system. Uh, and I just wonder, because every other country in, uh, in Asia, uh, and particularly in Asia, would be following some other system in some other country. And I just wonder how much of it actually uh, is Thailand following, and, and how effective is it? Are there any other alternatives to this? Well, these are my two questions. Thank you. Uh, in fact, uh, the the tutorial system that if you you find information until you are sure that is guilty or not guilty is a new thing for Thailand. Uh, in in the old days, is is uh, normally the accusatorial. We accuse you first, and then you you defend yourself. Um, I, I personally, I, I, I knew newcomer into the legal sphere myself. You know, I was economic professor until <laughs> four or five years ago. <laughs> uh, I found this to be more fair than the, the traditional accusatorial because they give you the chance to look in very exhaustive way. I could even say that even the that's why we had the special Supreme Court for politician, you know, using the same approach. 
you know, in, in designing the case, they all also use the inquisitorial. But the lower court, the normal criminal court, they still use the accusatorial, the original way. So we have two, two standards, <laughs> not double, but two standards. The, the people in the, the judicial system itself, they realize that. And there is a, there is a growing trend among the, the legal people themselves to try to change the whole system of Thailand into the inquisitorial, the new, the new system. The reason I, I should be able to say this is because I just attended the, uh, the seminar organized by the so-called the Office of the Judicial Officers, uh, you know, the, the Office of the Judiciary at the Minuto Hotel, only Mount Amantico. They want to explore the possibility of changing of the judicial system of Thailand based on the inquisitorial, not accusatorial. Yeah. So, so that, that, uh, that to answer your second question. For as for how to measure corruption, it's difficult. I don't know how to answer to you, you know. I hope that by concentrating more on the prevention and promotion, I can see less and less case being, you know, complained to us in the future. But that's not the correct way. I don't have the, 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 the definite answer to you. How do you measure whether corruption is more or less? You know, sometimes even in the international world, interna international organizations like, like I, uh, the uh, Transparency interna International, they only have the perception of, of corruption, not the accumulation. Now, uh, we would like to... Well, because I need to go to the toilet now. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's finish it then. We watch uh, steel uh, associated with the political science throughout Dawn and Brunswick universities. Uh, but thank you, for, uh, Dr. Meiji. Professor Mehdi, for your usual eloquence uh, and very clear, engaging presentation. Well, I have no doubt that the, the new law, uh, as you described, will be more effective than the old law. Uh, you have tried very hard, and I think you should be commended. But as ambassadors of the said, this might establish a, a new era, the dawn of the new era. Well, I've heard this before. When, when the uh, anti-corruption commission uh, of all was established some many years ago, uh, more than that. Uh, uh, so, uh, as one who is aware of the historical possibility, I still uh, imagine that 10 years from now, we might be talking about corruption. Uh, and it would be at the height of, uh, of folly or of quiet paradox if corruption has increased. Uh, 10 years from now. But I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> I, I'm for you, in fact. But, I, uh, but I'm just wondering that as you're an economist yourself, uh, don't you think that the legal, uh, legal procedure or legal approach alone will be able to um, reduce or eradicate uh, corruption. Uh, because uh, I think the corruption is a problem which is related to other uh, functions in society, economic, political, social. Uh, 
So uh, I think that the, the legal approach is, is rather compartmentalization, compartmentalized. Well, I am not uh, uh, disagree with you, but I, I, I commend to your effort. But I think the, the legal approach alone will be difficult, to say the least, to uh, reduce corruption. And uh, so I'm just uh, wondering that as your economist, uh, are you thinking of something that in a more holistic view of uh, approaching this problem in a sense of uh, including the political culture of the Thai people, uh, especially in the vote buying election that will come very soon, and also a kind of a, a paradigm shift in our society in order to come up with uh, the put an end uh, to this uh, difficult problems that we are encountering. Thank you. Uh, I could not agree more with you that the legal approach is just, 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 just one way of dealing with corruption, but not, not, certainly not the, uh, the only way or the whole way. Um, in fact, I have my own uh, theory about corruption as a communist, but that's the subject of another lecture. <laughs> uh, in fact, when I, I volunteered to do this job to the, uh, the Senate uh, search committee back five years ago, I gave my, my, my vision view to the selection committee on, on this very, very issue, how as a Congress I would tackle uh, corruption in Thailand. And maybe by the force of that, they picked me up for the job with the candidate. <laughs> but quickly, uh, the economic way of, of, of dealing with corruption is, is simply there's three three easy answers to that. One is you don't give you don't give too much discretion power to officials. If you give too much discretionary power to to decide to anyone, he or she will have a great opportunity to corrupt. You can if, if that someone can can uh, be reduced in, in terms of discretionary power, that, that's fine. Second point is, all the, all the issues involved has, should not involve any, any, uh, any opportunity of rent seeking. There should, should not be any money involved, if possible. There should not be any rent involved. If there is a rent, there will be rent seeker. And one, uh, those who have ability to seek rent, he or she will corrupt. Okay. And number three is more important. As long as you have a good system, a good system in law is part of that. You have a good law enforcement culture. Okay, culture and, and culture of the people and all that religion. If you have a good system in in, in a holistic thing in a holistic meaning, then people will not corrupt. Why, why, I, I, you don't see so, so much corruption in such country, like, let's say, uh, New Zealand, okay, which, the country which I've studied for five years. <laughs> I have seen it myself. I, I have seen it with my own eye now. People will not corrupt. So they are well off, they, they have good job, the government is, is clean, you know, and so on and so forth. Why would you corrupt? I mean, there's no, no, no reason for you. The government take care of you from when you're born until you die. No, no, no way you should do anything outside the ordinary. Okay. So the good system, they have been told from the beginning. I, I, I was shocked to see uh, kind of a, 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 a newspaper by the roadside with, with a box of coin behind it. That was five, fifty years ago. You know, you, when you sell newspapers, you don't, you don't sell. You, you put the paper on, on the roadside with a box of, of, of coin with it. Can you imagine? I, I am, I am a, a young student of, of uh, 
18. And I saw it for the first time, how can this be possible? People don't pick up the coin from, from the box and the newspaper at the same time. They don't do that. I've seen it for the first time, remember, 50 years ago, nothing new for me. <laughs> so, three, three, three answers for you, sir. <laughs> I think we, we have taken a lot of time from uh, Professor Vicky. Uh, perhaps we should conclude uh, these sessions. And uh, I'd like to, to add just a, a few words. Uh, I just tell a story about Singapore's experience. Uh, it sounds very useful. Uh, and he, he did say the same thing like to uh, Dr. Mitty, that uh, don't give too much discretionary power to official, in particularly the small fish. You see the small fish going and try to make some money. So it must be very clear that what sort of traffic uh, violation that you have to charge, exactly how much, one bar, two bar, twenty bar, or whatever you have to do. And, uh, and then you want to cook for the big fish, you know, uh, also. And uh, another thing that he, he, he mentioned is that, the, you know, the uh, he, he mentioned uh, two, two points here, but probably I'd like to, 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 to say this. I put it down on paper here. He said that when the case, cases go to the court, you know, there are some other things because, uh, so he said that, that in the new law of Singapore about 40 years ago, he said, it's unnecessary to prove that the person who carried out the bribe was in a position to carry out the required favor. I don't know what, whether that is uh, the case in our Thai new law. Because if you have to prove that that guy was able to carry out the favor, then it take a lot of time you know, for the court to prove. Uh, this is uh, one of the things. And another thing that I'd like to ask you, Mr. Officer, that whether the ACC would be able to arrest you know, the, the culprit yourself, or you have to go to the police. You know? And just, uh, just one more uh, thing. Liquid Jew again, he said, mentioned that. Uh, treat, treat the proof uh, that uh, an accused was living beyond his or her means or had property that, uh, that he would not be, you know, his, uh, you know, would not be able to afford uh, as uh, corroborating uh, evidence. What he means is that if you, you find a person who is living beyond the being, probably property, you know, then the court can use this evidence, uh, you know, too. But without the need to prove, you know, that is uh, uh, extra, extraordinary rich beyond this being. I wonder whether our new law is doing that because when the case could be called, it's different. After this, uh, I think the comment and we can close it. Okay. Just a quick answer to your ambassador uh, on the question of arrests. Uh, this is one power that the NECC commissioner refused to have. The, the parliament <coughs> consulted with us that they were to change the law in which we have the power to arrest people just like the police. And we talk about ourselves. We said, no, please don't give it to us. <laughs> uh, we don't want to, to turn ourselves to become a policeman. We just want to be investigated. But what, what if we found someone some, doing something wrong? We can always, it's, it's a law already. We can contact the police and go with the police to, to do that. We want to leave the arresting power to the police. We have a comparison in, in, in Hong Kong. They have the police power. They would have the jail in the, the office. If you visit the ICC in Hong Kong, you, I have done that before. I have visited the jail in the ICC office. About state jail, where they can put the people in. We don't want that. Okay, and to answer you is we need to go to the police. Okay, thank you.